speaker, four days ago, a huge earthquake and tsunami hit Japan. I was sort of surprised last night when we came in and there was no resolution recognizing the problems of the Japanese people and the terror and the difficulties they are dealing with at this time. So I want to come today to rise in support of them as they cope with this tremendous tragedy and the challenges that both the earthquake and the tsunami have created for them. For the last 10 years or so, I've been the chair of the Japanese American exchange between the Diet and the Congress, and I've gotten to know many Japanese uh, members of the Diet very well. I was a member of this uh, commission some years ago when Kobe had a huge earthquake and devastation that took $100 billion to recover from. So I was sort of brought up short by what happened when I saw it on television and thought of my friends, and I immediately started trying to call them. I couldn't find them. I only this morning got in touch with a friend of mine named uh, Matsuda-san. Uh, Masuda and I have been good friends for a long time. In fact, I've been to his home a very few miles from Sunday City, uh, where the earthquake, uh, the center of this whole event was. He's well, his family is well, and he said his friends are also safe and his house is still standing. So for many people, they've escaped the terror of this, but there are thousands and thousands of people who are struggling with this. And the Japanese people have shown a resilience, which is amazing. When the government said there's going to be rolling blackouts in Tokyo, we need to conserve electricity, the Japanese conserved electricity so quickly that they didn't have the rolling blackouts. That's how they came together in the interest of the common good in Japan. Now, Washington State, where I come from, has the third largest Japanese population in the United States. Only California and Hawaii have more. As I said, we have a sister city with Kobe. And when that hit, there was shock for everyone in Seattle because we also live on the ring of fire around the Pacific Ocean uh, that we've seen strike so recently, not only in Japan, but in New Zealand. Sometimes you can't believe it. You live in a place like that. You know it can happen anytime, but you still go on with your life, uh, sort of denying that it's real. After the Japanese earthquake in Kobe some years ago, there was a lot of criticism of the government. You didn't plan enough. Well, they've been planning for this for the last 10 years, but nobody can plan for an 8.9 Richter scale uh, earthquake. That's just too much. And I think that it is uh, uh, important to remember the Japanese are not just good allies. They're good friends. To many of us, they are brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers. Some of them are among my very best friends. This tragedy, as it continues to unfold, it's just what to think of what life is like for those people who are alive and under the rubble, or the homeless. Imagine you have a life. It's a nice life. You're working, you're going to school, your kids are growing up, and suddenly you have no food, no heat, no water, and you're in the freezing cold. Now, the United States has responded. We, we have had uh, military bases in Japan for a long time. Luckily, we, they were close by, so they could immediately move some of the aircraft carriers and other ships in to deliver relief aid. And it is at that time when you realize, in fact, their government has actually realized, uh, that fighting about some of the things politically they fight about uh, are not so important. What's really important is the basics of life being provided to everyone in the country. This is a national disaster that has been complicated by another factor that we have to consider in the United States, and that's the whole question of nuclear power and what happens to nuclear power plants. We have nuclear power plants in this country that are sitting near uh, earthquake zones. So this is not something that is something we can say, well, that's over there in Japan, that's 9,000 miles and 12 hours away. That is, in fact, very near to us here in this country. For the Japanese, the threat of nuclear contamination of radiation is a special horror because they suffered in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
the only use of nuclear weapons and the fallout that followed that today millions of japanese are still trying to absorb what they are seeing and valiantly fighting to control the damage our thoughts and prayers go to the japanese people i yield back the balance of my time the chair recognizes the gentlewoman from california ms spear for five minutes